Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to NJPW Pooralist Review. I am your co-host, the man with the turtle power, Andre C. Right over here, it's the epic princess herself. It's Melba. How you doing, Melba? I am doing great, Andre. I had a back day today for the first time in a while because of my shoulder injury. I'm pretty sure I did no favors to it, but I kept it light. I kept it light because the personal trainer was watching me and she was like scraping at me if I upped my weight. So <laughs> that got going. Sharon's not there. Um, how are you doing, my friend? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, we're today just having issues with my car. Hopefully, I can get the issue fixed before Friday so I can go to wrestling. Yes, do that. Prioritize. <sighs> I'm, try- I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. Top of list. 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 <laughs> oh. oh, that's an interesting indicator of how this show is going to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that crazy. Crazy cupcakes. We are a couple crazy cupcake. Qu- no, we're crazy cupcakes. Crazy <laughs> cupcakes with a Q with a Q Q W with a Q U. Crazy Q U. Get, 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 get. Uh, oh, if you, if you, if you know what I, if if you know what I'm talking about, please message me in the chat and in, in the comments down below. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Lord have mercy. This is going to be a long episode, isn't it? No, it's, it's not. No, we're it's we have really a lot not. to talk about, but we're going to hammer through a bunch of stuff because we have 19 mm-hmm. matches to go over. So we are going to mm-hmm. hammer through these because in a couple of days, we're going to have 11 more matches to talk about uh, this weekend for ne- the next show for uh, yeah. days three and four so <laughs> lots and lots of wrestling so we're gonna get we're gonna hammer through these me and mel each pick yes. a match per night for the g1 at climax which we are here to talk about day one and two mm-hmm. each, so we're gonna cover four of the matches i'll still give you the results for all the rest of the matches and we're gonna talk about a couple glow-ups and that because that's for sure because there's a couple glow-ups on this show for two you know, uh, young i love a good glow-up Oh, heck yeah. But before we do that, we want to thank each and every one of you. Thank you so much for joining us here. Uh, Don't forget to uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment down below. We love hearing from you. We love talking to you. Uh, We love just chatting about professional wrestling. Also, don't forget to share us out to your friends, family, and all the great uh, teachers out there who are just just wonderful. Just, Just wonderful. And don't forget to share. Uh, don't forget to hit that notification bell so you learn every time we drop a new video. Ding dong. Hello. Hello. Again, every time I make a comment, I'm trying to put it towards what something I'm watching. So. Okay. <laughs> um, you're watching something involving school. Okay. Yes. Yes, I I, okay. I just finished it, but I'm, I'm on to oh, another oh. show now. So. Well, fine then. Yeah. <laughs> But we are going to get into it. G1 Climax 34, days one and two. We're going to talk about it. We're going to break it all down. We're going to break down four of the 19 matches in the first two nights. Uh, we're kicking it off. We have to talk about this. Oleg Bolton versus Ren Narita. The first glow up of the night. Bolton Oleg. I, I said it the wrong way. I, I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Bolton Oleg. Coming out, all got new gear. Well, it's really the same gear, just new colors. And he's got a hat on. And it's, yeah, it, it, he, he's, he's bolting all like with a new hat. I love it. And, and a new nickname. Come on yes. now. Uh, uh, Bars. The, the Boz. Boz. I thought Bars. it was Boz. Oh, there was, I thought I, it was Boz. Like, I yes. don't know how to say it. I thought it was Bars. No, it's B A R S. Oh, Bars. Bars. Okay, I thought it was Bars. I heard Bars. But we yeah, are the he is the Kazakh Snow Leopard, Bolton Oleg now, which I was like, and he's wearing, and I called it. I said he's going to be wearing, he just put him in his Kazakhstani colors where he's wearing that, that baby blue with the yellow. I was like, 
that works. That works. Yes. It works very well with him, with his skin tone, with his hair color, eye color, everything. He does, though. He jumps like Lesnar. He did the apron jump like Lesnar. <laughs> yeah. well, we're going to talk about something yeah. else he did that was very Lesnar. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Yeah, so we're just going to jump to the end. Bolt in the Lake. It's this huge dropkick for Narita. Fights off the gut wrench swing. Narita gets the guillotine knee. Goes to the top. Hits Howell's guillotine for off the top for two. Then into the iron bar. But Bolton stacks him. Lifts him onto his shoulders for an F5 million. And then Bolton the Lake picks him up on the shoulders. Hits Kamikaze to win his first G1 match in his first G1. Let's go. Yay! This made me so happy. So, so happy. Um, yeah, the, yeah. This was just like everything that I had for this match was the was reacting to Bolton's new look. Um, also just wanted to mention real quick so we don't leave Mr. Narita out. His look is also something that I'm rather quite fond of. Mm. I like the black cloak. With the the push up bar is getting a little you know old, but that's obviously what his weapon of choice is. Um, but yeah, I I actually really like his his gimmick, his House of Torture gimmick. I do feel it's given him a lot of personality, which is why I felt that because like for Bolton Oleg's first match and his first win, I feel that this was the perfect person for him to work. Because for Ren Reedy, he's taken a lot of losses this year, so that him taking this loss to Bolton Oleg, really the the, the official graduate Bolton Oleg, mm -hmm. it doesn't hurt Narita at all. No, not at all. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to jump forward. We're not going to be going that in depth into the rest of the matches because no. <laughs> we just have to. Okay. One more glow up though in Callum yes. Newman. Oh my God. Like he's, he's channeling Osprey in the look, the pants. Uh, very. I feel like it's almost a, almost a cross between Kyle Fletcher and Will Osprey in his in the pants with the arrows on with the arrows on it, and then uh, and then with the jacket looking just like Osprey's. What like a a toned down a little bit toned down version of one of Osprey's jackets. So really, I kind of thought it was like actually more TJP ish. Yeah, it can. Per... TJ, yeah, the TJP vibes, but like. It's yeah. very, you can see it's very Osprey inspired though in his look. Maybe it's a combo with the two. Who knows? Yeah. Well, yeah, it's two mentors, really. It's just two mm -hmm. mentors. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But to the end of this match, Bolt, or no, I, I, I forgot to scroll down to the notes. I almost went to the Bolt Nolly finish. Uh, <laughs> Newman hits a drop kick to the back of the neck in the corner, hits, goes that hop up, hop up the ropes into the double stomp to the back off the top and hits the Oz cutter in his first ever G1 match. He gets his first win. So both Bolton and Newman get their first wins in on the first night. It's awesome. Yes. Yes. It makes me very happy. Um, yeah, the um, I really, really like the the whole new look with um, Newman bringing out the flag and everything. It was a great representation of United Empire and a great way to kick off representation for United Empire. Only other thing I wanted to mention on this one was Shota. Mm. Certain unit on this one. Um, he struggled a little bit. And like, there was one point where he was trying to keep up with the pace of the Prince of Pace, which was kind of stupid in the first place. You could see him stumble. And, and and kind of trip up. And after that point, it was a struggle for him um, kind of um, going throughout the match. Walking was a little laborious for him. So I am concerned about him for the rest of the tournament. However, Andre, what do you thought? Yeah, again, I, I, I think we'll talk more about Umino uh, when we get to night two. But he, again, yeah, there was, seemed to have a little struggle. But... Mm -hmm. He he's gonna rebound in this tournament. Like he's gonna be able to 100%. drive himself back up. So yeah, 100%. we move on to David Finley. Did I put this out of order? You sure did. I have a, fan, a Phantasmo and Hanari next. I am bad at my job. Uh, 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 uh. Hanari and yeah, and okay. Uh, what the hell did I do here? Did you forget the graphics? 
I must have mixed up graphics on the nights. I uh -oh. did. I put the wrong graphic in for her. Uh oh. I I put okay. the I put the day two graphic in that place. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to pop this over here while we do this, and we're going to talk <laughs> about it. Talk about ELP versus Hanare. Uh, absolutely yeah. tremendous match. ELP. They're trying mm -hmm. to tell the story of the of the man who's who's lost. He still mm -hmm. has a Jado, but he's lost. He's lost. He lost his his Tongans. He lost. He, yeah. He's. They're kind of almost like I'm, I was kind of like laughing to myself about it because <laughs> who am I going to talk to? Um, but I was kind of like, are they doing the Shawn Michaels lost his smile angle with ELP mm -hmm. in this tournament? I really do feel like ELP is actually going to be. Um, the focal point story. There's always like a really good story that develops in all of these tournaments. I feel like ELP is going to be the big one. Um, whether he be to, whether it turns into a Cinderella story or not, I'm not entirely sure yet. I need I think I need to see a few more nights yeah. to kind of figure that out. But um yeah. Yeah. Um so the end of this match comes ELP gets a burning hammer and thunder kiss 86 off the top rope. But Hanari kicks out at 2.99. Uh, ELP goes for CR2, the, can the second Canadian Revolution. But Hanari fights it off, hits that knee to the face, and it's a Samoan drop. Or, sorry, the. What, what's, where's he from? And they, they called it that too. Um, his culture. Streets of Rage? No, the. It's with an M, his people, his culture. Maori? Yeah, the Maori drop is what they called that Samoan drop. But uh, he hits Rampage, uh, planting ELP for two. Uh, ELP does uh, get roll rolled up on a Streets of Rage attempt by ELP, but ELP only gets two. Hanari comes back with a shot to the liver, picks him up, hits him with one of the best video game, uh, one of the best video game uh, series, the Streets of Rage, for the win. Again, awesome match. Hanari looking phenomenal. ELP looking very good, but try uh, mm -hmm. again, I like the character work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's an interesting story that they're going to be telling with him throughout this tournament for sure. Um, the only thing I wanted to mention is the chemistry between these two was absolutely perfect. I felt that these guys had a very, very solid match. And both mm. of them, like, just... They, they just did that. I felt that it was really good. Like there's some people who can get that chemistry very effortlessly. And then there's some people that we can see who just can't. These guys from start to finish were in perfect sync, perfect flow. You know, it was a great match. Very solid match. Yeah. There we go. And back to the graphics because I'm not totally bad at my job. <laughs> good job, sir. Good job. We get Zack Sabre Jr. versus the Great Ocon, my second pick on um, for match of the night because I loved the technicalness and just how both men were trying. Like Khan saying, "I will go and I will face everybody in their type of match. I will go mm -hmm. and like and he wants to match everybody." And this was a perfect match because again, both these guys so do so well in their technical wrestling. And it's such a fun time watching these two go at it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the end of this match comes. Saber uh, with hits some kicks, but misses the PK. Khan gets the claw in, but Saber reverses that an eliminator into a DDT. Falls up with a Zack Driver for the win. And as Zack Saber Jr. is leaving, he starts like playing with a young lion's hair. It was it was funny. Wasn't it? Um. Uh, that one with a long ass name. It can. Uh. Yeah, it's the one with the oh, long Chumakata. name. No, not Shamakato. It's, it's the one with the long name. Uh, I can't oh, remember. yeah. Okay. I ha yeah, I have to look that one up. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, what else can you say? I mean, the Great Ocon really did show his versatility in this one, kind of dragging Zack Sabre Jr. out at one point, tossing them into the chairs and stuff. It was a good time. Good time. Mm -hmm. Really, really cool to see the the transitions with these two. The Because Ocon's background... I feel that they were able to transition with the um, submission stuff really, really easily. That mm -hmm. technical kind of aspect of this match that we don't always see out of Ocon was really on display on that. And I love it. 
Yeah. And I, I love Saber even getting into the striking game with Khan. Mm-hmm. Because you don't see Saber, that's not his forte. Striking is not his forte. Maybe his kicks are, no. but his punches Yet. are not. So no, he has been putting on a little bit of size though. Oh, very much so. Yeah. So we move on to the oldest man in the tournament, Hiroki Gato versus one of the older men in the tournament, Jeff Cobb. Both men are in their 40s here in this match. Uh, Mm -hmm. This is a hoss battle. These two just smacking the crap out of each other, and I love it. I just love Mm -hmm. it. Um, The end of this match, uh, I got to to point one point out. Goto hits an Ushiguroshi, but only gets 2.5, according to Walker Stewart. Thank you, Walker. (laughs) You only got 2.5. I, was, I laughed at that. Only 2.5. The this, yeah, the end of this match, Cobb hit stops the GTR, goes for his own uh, Alohan GTR, but Goto gets a victory roll for two. Cobb, uh, tour of the island, is, is slipped out of it by Goto into the rear naked choke, into a crucifix pin for two. Cobb lifts Goto for a suplex, then drops him down into tour of the islands for the win. Yeah, and that was a great setup for the tour of the islands, too. You got some height. It's great. Yeah, I don't have anything to add to this. This was a very solid, solid match. I just enjoyed it. It was two big, meaty men slapping meat. Yep. Very much. I, I, I thought these two just did so well. Mm-hmm. We move on to the shortest match of the night. It is Sonata mm-hmm. versus the smart bastard, Jake Lee. That is his new mm-hmm. official nickname. Uh, so, a yeah. little bit of backstory. Jake Lee's not representing Noah anymore, according to him. Uh, he is now representing War Dogs and New Japan Pro Wrestling in this there. Because he, at the July 13th show, uh, had his farewell good-looking good guys match to, to end the stable. Uh, and then he turned on his teammate and choke slammed him and accepted the Bullet Club War Dog shirt from uh, Mr. Gato. And he pretty much said, I'm leaving to Noah and walked out to New Japan. Yeah. So now he's a smart bastard. So this match yeah. went very quickly. There wasn't yes. a lot here. Um, so not trying to get the advantage early. And he's, he's, he's controlling most of this match, getting, getting O'Connor roll and stuff. But Sonata misses a springboard attack, ends up in the corner. And this is where Jake hits the face break shot, which is that running boot into the corner, Haluva kick. And he get and he just crosses the arms of Sonata on the mat. And one, two, three. Jake Lee is your winner. Yeah. 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 Um, this was um the third shocking win for me for the night. Because I, de- I I knew Jake Lee was going to be a spoiler in this tournament. I knew he was gonna do very, very well. I didn't know he was gonna do like beat Sonata well. Holy heck. Smart bastard, though, a very appropriate nickname for him. He was very, very intelligent in ring worker and very, very experienced um, with that effortless charisma that he has. It was odd. I was, no, I was like sitting there wondering when I saw him come out. I'm like, he's pretty. He's, he's interesting to look at, but like, there's something. He, he's very popular over there for a reason. I'm gonna hope that this shows me why. This showed me why. We got Captain Sassy Pants out of Sonata at one point in this match. For how short this match was, he was actually able to pull a decent amount of charisma out of Sonata, who's usually not capable of, of stepping up to that, especially a match so early in the the night for him um yeah i i felt this was really really good match really really good match especially yeah. for sonata 100 percent. i i thought sonata looked like like a star here i'm like this is yes. the sonata we should have had during his championship reign where was he really? at that point like, like, well jake uh, lee wasn't there I know, so I don't know. <laughs> like, and again, Sonata maybe on the next night wasn't as dynamic in my personal opinion. He was still better than normal. Maybe we're getting we'll G one Sonata. We get maybe we're getting G one oh, Sonata. Well, I mean, because G one Yoshihashi is no longer a thing a thing, is it? Yeah, you probably are. here's my power. Be be stronger. <laughs> oh, we dear. move on to my pick of the night, and I'm picking a yeah. Yuya Yui Mura match. I never thought I'd do that in this entire tournament, but I am. 
David Finley versus Yuya Yuimura, the not so black hole of charisma in Yuya Yuimura, because David Finley brought some out of this kid, and I loved it, man. Um, yeah, uh, let's get into the match. Finley sending Yuimura over the top, knocks him off the airprint into the barricade. I thought they were going to do the Avesan spot here, but uh, Avesan didn't fall over. Yes. Thank Which I was, goodness. I, was, I was impressed by. Um, mm-hmm. He ends up spitting at people in the crowd. Uh, Finley pulls you and Murrah th- back. Like he knocks him over the barricade and then he pulls him through the barricade back in. I'm like, oh, Jesus. Um, yeah. Like he, he barely fit, but he made it. Yeah. There's one point later on when they're on the outside and Finley ends up spitting at Hiromu Takahashi, who's on commentary. Did you see why? Well, there's a whole thing about him wanting, Hiromu wanting to get uh, open weight title matches. So I don't know. He was wearing Finley's jacket. Oh, was he? Oh, okay. yeah. That was why he was getting so mad. He was wearing that that intro, that really nice intro jacket with the fuzziness. Yeah. Yeah, he stole it and he he put it on. He was wearing it at commentary. I didn't realize that. Okay, but again, I think I think we might get a we might get a global championship match out of this. It's very possible. Uh, you and Mara, what Larry, better way to step Hiromu, sorry, what better way to step Hiromu into a heavier weight division than a global championship opportunity? Sorry, continue. Yeah, uh, back of the ring, Yuri Murray, Larry, it's Finley over the top. They both go over, but Yuri Murray hangs on, skins the cat back in, hits a running plancha to the floor, and is whipping Finley into the barricades and repeatedly. Later in the match, Finley avoids the O'Connor roll, hits a blue thunder bomb for two. Falls up with a huge dominator, uh, but again, he can only get two. You remember, slips the power bomb, hits a German for two, but then holds him all, like with a bridge, rolls him through, and hits a dragon suplex, but again, only gets two. Uh, the dead bull gets stopped. Finley hits the belly to belly. They trade strikes. You remember, hits the Pele kick, but Finley comes back with a huge lariat, hits repeated buckle bombs. But Yurimura runs him into a pin off the power bomb. And Yurimura is your winner. This surprised the piss out of me. Yui, 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 Yurimura. Yeah, Yurimura. Oh, man. Oh, man. Andre, yeah. how do you feel about this? Honestly, I'm, I'm not mad because I think they did a great job in pulling character out of Yui Mura. I think uh, Finley in this create again, they're going to create challengers for the title in the fall. And I, if you can give me this Yui Mura against Finley again, I'm okay with this match as long as Finley keeps his title. Yeah. Same. Same. Yeah. We don't need you Mura having another title quite yet. Um, but yeah. Uh, what do I have to add? Um, Finley has a new style of pants, pantaloons, if you will. Uh, they're kind of military style. So they're kind of like baggier. And he doesn't wear his knee pads over top of them like like Drilla kind of did. He wears them underneath. So they look like legit kind of military style pants. Mm-hmm. I'm not the biggest fan of that that style, but I get the reasoning why. They're the war dogs. It kind of makes sense to look military-esque. So I think that the look works really well. Mm-hmm. Um, there's that European uppercut that Finley does, that running European uppercut that he does in the corner. That's always a favorite of mine. I don't know why I love those so much. They're just that. He, and he, then he follows it up with that release suplex where he just like, we, the person across the ring. I love that. Um, there's a head flip that Yu Yumura does, very reminiscent of our local Jared Rogers. That I thought was super impressive because, like, you don't see a lot of people do that. That's actually something super impressive to have a neck that strong. Um, yeah, the jacket on commentary, the suplexes, Dominator from Finley. Um, so the suplex pin attempts by Yu Yomura were impressive. I don't know what I meant by that, but. Oh, probably the German suplex and br- with the bridge, and then the dragon suplex with the bridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the fact there that he held on, See? he held on to it when he rolled out of the bridge, 
kick the yeah. into the dragon. That's probably why I was impressed with it. I wish I wrote more detail. I was probably just enjoying the rest of the match. I did feel this was a little bit of a shocking loss for Finley, especially given how the second name went. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I think I agree with you. I'm not too, too mad about it because it gives Yuya some momentum going into the rest of the tournament, which I think is good because I think positive Yuya is better than Mopey Dopey mm -hmm. Yuya. So I'll take it. I'll yep. take it. That being said, I am concerned about Finley. Yeah, I, I think he'll be okay. Uh, this man will come back. He is going to get third place in his block. I'm telling you right now. That's what I, that's what I predicted. Um, we move on to not the worst evil match I've ever seen because Gabe Kidd is a goddamn star. Uh, Gabe Kidd playing the good guy here. Um, right? Yeah. This is the second time we have seen a war dog do that in these tournaments. That first one being Clark Connors. Now we see Gabe Kidd playing face a little bit. What the hell is going on? So this was this was clocked in as a 10 minute match, but it's probably more like 18 because they fought on the outside for a good like seven or eight minutes before the match. Yeah, started. it's um, true. Lots of shenanigans throughout, but from both men in this match. But again, like kid was he's so good, man. Uh, the mm -hmm. end of this match comes, comes um, kid ends up taking out the dick, not his. Dick Togo, um, and attack, and then attacks Evil. Marty Asami's trying to stop him. He kid tosses Marty out of the ring. This is where uh, to Dick Togo comes back in, chokes kid, but kid reverses, gets the garrote, and he starts attacking uh, uh, Dick Togo. But he gets low blowed by Evil. They hit the magic killer. Evil stands him up. Everything is evil. Evil is your winner. Just a great match at the end this way. I was like, wow, I'm enjoying an evil match. And then. Yeah. yeah. It was actually, yeah. It was a really great match. I agree. Because Gabe Kidd is a freaking star. The Topic on Halo to start the match before Evil and Togo had even made it to the ring. Like, god dang. That was mm -hmm. great. But then the chair. The chair spot. Where Gabe Kidd is just running full tilt Suzu Suzuki style across the auditorium, then he meets Mr. Chairface. Mm -hmm. That was that was God, pretty good. Damn. And then he put the he put the the thing on his neck and did that home run chair shot around his neck. Uh, he has, I haven't seen Evil do that in a while too. So it was kind of almost cool to see him do it again in a way. Right, right. It's like they stop doing shit for a while. Suddenly you start to miss it when they bring it back. You suddenly are like, oh, yeah, missed you. I wish they would just take away House of Torture for a while and maybe we'd learn to miss them. <laughs> eh, they're not going to do that. No, we move on to Melball's pick. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so do you want me to go through my the notes yeah. first and then you can come in with your stuff? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I literally had a note in here before she even told me what her pick was. Says Mel Ball pick question mark because I know how in love she is with these two people. Yeah, we gotta yeah. send. Oh, we gotta these send like... invitations. We gotta send them invitations. <laughs> please do, please do. Yeah, these are my one of my favorites from NJPW. One of the reasons I watched anything AEW. Yeah, yeah. take us into it, my friend. Man, I really wish Don Callis was here with Takeshita. I really want Takeshita to win to do Don Callis proud. I'm joking. I'm I hate joking. you right now. I hate you so much you right now. You know I was going to do that. Come on. You know Rude. I was going to do that. Uh, Suji gets the advantage early. Kanosuke rake in the eyes, uh, but Suji fights back. Kanosuke gets catch gains speed, drops Suji, sending him out of the ring, and he hits a beautiful Topicon Hilo. Uh, they whip mm -hmm. each other into the barricades. Kanosuke ends up flapjacking Suji on the barricade. A little bit later, Suji Rana's Kanosuke off the top, sending him out, and he hits and he hits a cold <laughs> Topic on Hilo to the floor. A Suji yeah. did it was pretty impressive. 
Mm-hmm. Um, Takeshita fights with Suji, goes uh, for the suplex, and he gets Suji up, hits that brain buster, but he does, can't capitalize. They're trading attacks in the corner. Takeshita gets his power drive knee and a German, but he only gets two. Suji cuts him off up top. They brawl. Takeshita, this is where Takeshita like, falls off the top, and I, I was like, oh, my God, because he fell head first. I'm like, oh, God. No, two, twice. I thought it was only twice. I only noticed them falling. The first through. time was the the first time was the the head one. The second time he stumbled down to the apron and and recovered quicker. And then this another time he fell down to the apron a little more awkwardly, and they oh, took okay. a little while to set that up. Yeah, so he, yeah, he I I was scared he was hurt. They go back up. Takeshi falls again. Then back up, and I guess he falls again. Uh, but Suji ends up getting a Spanish fly off the top. I kind of wish they would have just abandoned the spot. Um, yeah. Uh, Takeshi dodges the Gene Blaster. I uh, guess a German in a big boot hits a poison Rana, but Suji hits a super kick when he's going for the power drive knee and hits the Falcon arrow for dose. Uh, the end of this match comes Suji with a Rana like maneuver and then the head, butt falls up with a Marlow crash off the top, but he only gets two. He lines up gene blaster, but Kanosuke hits him with the power drive knee to stop the gene blaster picks them up. Blue Thunder Bomb and follows with the Dead to Rights Falcon Arrow for the win. Well, my prediction of Suji going undefeated is over. <laughs> On night one. <laughs> but but I I feel like, you know, like holy hecking crap, what a match though. Mm-hmm. I mean Takashka calls himself the Alpha. These were two Alphas standing in the ring across from each other. Like the story that they told at the beginning where they were sizing each other up, just kind of like limbering around the way. It took them a good little while of building intensity, stirring the pot, if you will, um, before getting into this incredible freaking page. Uh, what do I have? I, have a, I got one okay. comment though from that size up at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Suji is a tall mf'er, and Takeshi is taller. Dwarfed. Yeah, that he was insane. dwarfed by Takeshi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. It, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> the there was a forearm that Takeshi tried to throw at Suji at the, near the beginning there when they were still kind of sizing each other up in the corner. Looks stiff as frick. I loved it. I was like, "Ooh, this is gonna be so good." Um, yeah, the Tope Cone Hilo that um, uh, Takeshka did to Suji, where he pretty much slammed himself into the barricade as well, was just mental. Did you see that where he went like chest first, straight into it? Yeah. Looked a little painful. Uh, reverse dingle dangle by Suji. But he tried, but Takeshka. He got un- it up. Barely, because un- Takeshka unhooked his he leg got almost it up. immediately. Like, he got it up. There was danglage. There was dinglage. There was dingling danglage. It was a reverse dingle dangle. Oh, I did say reverse dingle dangle almost. Yeah, there you go. So, yeah, there have been better. Um, I felt that there was a bit of a battle of suplexes at one point where they were just back and forth suplexing, 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 suplexing. Mine's better, mine's better, mine's better, mine's better. I always like that. It's just a nice little show of strength. Um, There's a face stomp thing that Suji does from the corner that I really, really like. Yeah, the Marlo Crash where he hops up and then comes down with the stomp? Yes. Or is it's the okay, one where he catches the person, or is it one where he catches them with his legs and slams their face? Yeah, the slammy thing. Oh, okay, yeah. Sorry, I was thinking Marlo Crash, which is it, which is that big giant stomp off the top. No, no, it's the thing where he supports it, and yeah, um, okay. the German. There was a German uh, pin, German suplex pin that Takeshka did on Suji that was just picture perfect. Uh, jumping knee by Takeshka is just insane. The height that he gets on that is just mental, mental. Um, yeah, the top rope Spanish fly was a little iffy. I, I also wish they kind of just abandoned the move after that point and just kind of went on. Mm-hmm. Um, 
There was one point where Suji's just feeding Takeshka forearm, 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 forearm. And Takeshka just winds up and just nails Suji once and down he freaking goes. It's like, holy frick. This is great. Um, yeah. And last thing, the blue thunder bomb that freaking Takeshka does is just the bounce mm. that Suji got off the landing on that. I was like, God damn. So good. I love that. Good match. Yeah. Absolutely incredible match. Let's move on to the main event. It is yeah. Shingo Takagi versus Tetsuya Naito. Battle of L.I.J. Incredible match. Mm -hmm. We're going to get to the finish. The last of the dragon gets reversed into a half Destino. But uh, Naito cannot capitalize. Naito puts Shingo up top. Hits the Rana off the top. Falls with the Tornado DDT. He goes for Destino, but it's stopped. But Naito does hit Valencia. Uh, Destino gets blocked again. Naito hitting kick. Shingo catches him and hits him with the Takagi driver, 98. But he only gets two. Sliding elbow. And Takagi picks up his, his leader. Last of the dragon for the win. Shingo Takagi beats the IWGP World Champion. Yes. Did you hear Chris Charlton correcting Walker Stewart for it? Yeah, because he yells, Made in Japan. And Chris just goes, Last of Last the, of the dragon. dragon. Last of the dragon. Loved it. Oh, so Loved good. it. So um, uh, the do 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 do. Shingo refusing the fist bump beginning of the match that was a little awkward um but he has something to prove in this thing and i think it was the right decision told a little bit of a story there um uh, there's the back and forth that they did a lot with that it was just so good it was it was definitely an anything you can do i can do better mm. kind of match um yeah i felt that uh shingo really showed up and showed out in this one i was really really impressed with this yeah I, I really thought this was a great match. So quick point update. It's very easy right now. Jake Lee, Evil, Saber, Newman, and Takagi, all with two points in the A block. The rest with zero. Easy easy update on this on these first couple of nights. B block, Cobb, Hanari, Bold Noleg, Kanosuke Takeshita, and Yuya Rimura, all with two points, and the rest with zero. I love night one updates. It's so easy. It is. It's the easiest one. Yeah, so we move on to night two, and we get Sonata versus uh, I scrolled down. Sonata versus Callum Newman. Honestly, like I thought, Sonata still had really good charisma in this match. Like not mm -hmm. quite what he had on night one with mm -hmm. Jake Lee, but still, it's still like it's G one Sonata, man. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, G one Sonata needs to stick around. Uh. Yeah, uh, Sonata reverses Newman. He flips him onto his tummy, and then he picks him up, and then he hits, he picks him up, and gets him with a magic screw. He hits him with a shining wizard. Hits a rounding body press, or goes to the rounding body press, but is missed. And Newman hits a, a flying knee. Hits that corner drop kick to the back of the neck. Hits that double jump stomp off the top, and uh, but that is avoided. Sonata misses the shining wizard. They each are reversing each other's moves. Newman gets a tornado kick, goes for the ass cutter, but is caught into deadfall, and Sonata gets the win. I loved the catch of the ass cutter into deadfall. I thought it was a great setup. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. Um, I I was a little disappointed that Newman lost this one, but um, it was a fantastic show off match for both these guys, and like you said, that charisma that was pumped into him by Jake Lee the night before, clearly remaining with Sonata, giving us this really great chemistry between these two. The the Paradise Lock attempt, I think, was one of my favorite spots of this because they were just he was just so prepared for what it was Sonata was trying to do. I really enjoyed it. Good match. Good match. Yeah, great strong match. Uh, the next match is my honorable mention of the night. It's Bolt Lolig <laughs> versus Sonara. I told I told you we had an honorable mention. This was so good. Um, yeah. this shows me that Oleg and Hanari need to have a match down the road for the Never Title. Cause holy 100%. crap, 
Dude, when he was doing that swinging Baszler to Hanare, Hanare. holy moly, like just right? swinging Baszler, doing that swinging Baszler, just top the swinging Hanare around. It was crazy. Yeah, very, very good show of strength. Absolutely. Yeah, but the end, Bolton stops Ultima, hits strikes, Hanare hits a spin kick, but he comes out with a spin kick to the head, hits that flying headbutt, and picks him up for the street of Rage. Great gaming uh, franchise for the win. Dude, a bunch of his moves are named after video games. The ramp Rampage, video game, Streets of Rage. Ultima is a move from Final Fantasy. Yeah. I was going to say, I know Ultima because I've been watching the Final Fantasy stuff. Mm -hmm. And I know Rampage because I have the stupid arcade of it. Mm -hmm. Streets of Rage is not what I'm privy to. A Sega game from the 90s, and then they just released Streets of Rage 4 a couple of years back. It's it's a side-scrolling beat-em-up. It's been a while since I've dated a gamer, so I mean, sorry. Um, yeah, this was a great match. Great, great match. Great follow-up for uh, Bolton, and the loss in this does not take not at all away at all from the momentum. I'm excited to see how the rest of his tournament goes. Yeah, me too. Again, it, it, it was a really good spot. So we move mm -hmm. on to the great Okan versus Gabe Kid. Again, this was Okan stepping up to face Kid in just a brawl, and he was brawling with him, and they were brawling all over the place. So they spent more time on the outside than in the ring, I think. It was crazy. Yes. It was a spot where yes. they both ran back in at 19. <laughs> Mel's favorite number in wrestling. Uh, so that's I did not the like end. that spot. <laughs> Yeah, they're brawling up the ramp. They both get back in at 19, where they end up sprinting back in. It's a very long 19 to 20. Uh, they trade Germans in the ring. Khan hits grapple, Fado Khan. Uh, Kids bites uh, the hand to get out of the eliminator and hits a lariat for two. Khan stops the pile driver, and it turns it into an intercollegiate slam, according to Walker and Chris. Uh, both men just are hitting hard strikes, and Kid just goes off the rope, comes back with that rebound lariat, taking Khan out and getting the win. Again, incredible match between these two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's kind of like a, a little redemption match for Kid, but holy heck, he was on fire. Crowd favorite, too, and he's... He's still unhinged. He's still war ready, but he's like nice about it. Mm -hmm. It's weird. It's a weird thing to describe, but like it doesn't remove any intimidation factor from him at all. I would be running for the hills if he starts stomping towards me. Let me tell you. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, again, he, he hasn't changed anything, but this crowd just got behind him and it was perfect. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. This was a great match. Great, great okay, match. Yeah. We move on to El Fantasmo versus Ren and Narita. They talked about a little bit of history of them working together back before uh, Narita was had joined House of Torture when he was kind of Hontai adjacent. Same with ELP was Hontai adjacent there for a little bit together. Oh, the strong uh, style. Yeah, when he was strong style, which was Hontai adjacent, and ELP was joining... G.O.D., which was Hauntai adjacent, so they had they ended up working together a few times throughout that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that they gave it a little bit of history, but then Narita saying this is his first G1, even though it's the second, because the first real Narita G1. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, the end yeah. of this match comes, Narita ends up grabbing the ref, ELP shoves the ref out of the way, and Narita gets a chop block to the knee, follows it up with the double cross for the win. Mm -hmm. nah. Yeah. I was a little disappointed by the end of this. Yeah. Yeah. It was a, good, I definitely it was a really felt... good match. Yeah. Just felt that, you know, Phantasma deserved it a little bit better. I think they're going to tell a story with this, though. It's true. It's true. Because, like, in all these tournaments, you probably, like, I hear this every time we have a tournament. There's always a Cinderella story. And TJP. I feel like it could. Yeah, TJP was in the uh, Super Junior. I think Phantasma is going to be our Cinderella in this one. And I look forward to it. 
I hope to see his jacket on as his mood changes throughout the tournament because it's weird seeing him come out with a broken heart and nothing on his jacket. And his partner's all the way in another on, in another continent working for another company now. So Yeah, I'm kind of annoyed also. Like, why is Jock Jockdo there? Still got well, the G.O.D. badge. But because because El Phantasma was technically a member of G.O.D. And but there's no G.O.D. G.O.D. was the guys who were in WWE now. No, Jackdo and and El Phantasma are G.O.D. What are you talking about? They're the last remnants of G.O.D. <laughs> I hope Phantasma finds his way. Me too. Follow the Leo Pluridon. Magical Leo Pluridon. We move on to Evil versus the not so smart bastard Jake Lee in this match. Uh, this was a good. He a pretty, tried. Yeah, it was a pretty good match throughout, but at the end of this game, Evil hits a thumb to the eye to stop the choke slam. Uh, but Lee ends up fighting him off, and he gets the choke slam. But as it's happening, Evil does get another thumb to the eye uh, as he's getting choke slammed. Uh, Lee ends up running into the exposed corner, going for his uh, his his saluva kick there, but uh, evil gets out of the way and then he gets hit with the powder to the face by Mr. Togo and evil hits. Everything is evil for the win. And my other, the note after that was bullshit. Balls. All the balls. Yeah. Um, evil's. You can only prepare for so much with, sorry, which, Evil's on top of the block with this win. Yeah, I know. I know. But forever Cinderella's story there is, there is a downfall story as well, so we can only hope. Let's hope. Yes. Let's hope. Let's hope. Um, yeah. Th there is a... I mean, you can only do so much against House of Torture, though, right? You gotta have eyes in the back of your head. And I, I feel like Jake Lee came into this match pretty confident. But he forgot about the little dick. It's unfortunate. The little dick's always getting in the way. Yeah, always ringing them bells. It's not the usually a lanes. problem for little little dicks. Don't usually get in the way though. Right, <laughs> which is why this one's an interesting problem. <laughs> we move on to a much better match: Hiroki Goto versus Yuya Yui Mura. Again, I don't think. We got as much out of Yuri Mura in this match, charisma wise, but he still was better than he has been. Mm -hmm. And Goto, because I don't think I don't look at Goto as a super charismatic person either. That's the other no. thing. But he's got that like very dry. He's got that dry charisma where he he he's charismatic even without being expressive. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, so the end of this match comes. Uh, they're trading chops at center. Yuri Mura unloads the uh, strikes, but Goto gets an inverted GTR. It's a lariat, then gets him up for GTW, but can only get two uh, kicks by Goto. He unloads with slaps, but Yuri Mura hits a headbutt, but he can't get the deadbolt. Uh, but he avoids a GTR into the backslide, then follows it up with the deadbolt for the win. Yeah, did not expect that. I did not expect it either. Um, I, I, I'm again, it's kind of weird because I'm not either. It's funny that we've said that for now, two Yu Yu Yumura matches in a row. Mm -hmm. Kids growing on us. Yeah, can't figure out if it's a, a plant or a rash, but kids growing on us. I think it's more like black mold. That's not pretty to look at, though. Nor is a, nor is a rash. Well, I haven't figured out. <laughs> I haven't figured yeah. out my attraction to you yet. Um, yeah. This was a fun match. Again, it was better than the match before. Just mm -hmm. because I didn't feel that we got the ability to see a whole lot of Jake Lee's kind of ability against a threat like evil. Um, but this match wasn't just a straight up really awesome traditional wrestling match for me because Yuya does tend to wrestle that 
kind of 80s traditional style and as does Goto. So I felt that this was just a really great traditional match. Yeah. I did find it interesting that he wore a jacket similar to Goto when he came out, Yu Yu Yomura. Mm, just a different color. It's true. Yeah. We move on to Chinga Takagi versus Shota Umino. Man, Shota really stepped it up from the night before. Uh, I think like he turned. He, it, I switched her on with this kid, and he just he matched fire for fire with Shingo Takagi, which is very hard to do for even the most charismatic and fired up people in professional wrestling. Not many can match the intensity of Shingo Takagi, and Umino went toe to toe with him. Uh, the the uh, End of this match comes. There was a backslide into a cradle DDT by Umino, and both men are down. Uh, Umino comes out back with an exploder, and um, but Chingo hits a Chingo bomber, um, and into into. But he, Umino gets another exploder. Umino hits a blaze, or sorry, he hits the exploder, stopping a Chingo uh, bomber, uh, as the as the commentary was saying. Which is the hilarious okay. bomber. Um, Umino hits Blaze Blade, but Shingo stops at Death Rider. They start trading strike, but Umino gets him up for what kind of looked like a Death Rider and gets the win. Mm-hmm. So, ending sequence was really off. The match was insane, but that ending sequence was just off to me. Yeah. Yeah, but you know. I'll take it. Mm -hmm. I'll take it. Um, It was, it's interesting to see from the match that Shingo had the night before to this one difference. But again, it was also interesting to see the difference from Shota the night before to this one. I think he got an epidural. He just couldn't feel his legs very well. Um, yeah, I don't have anything to add to this one, really. I, I just kind of enjoyed this one. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. We're going to my favorite match of the night. It's <laughs> one of my favorite rematches because, man, these two, lo- I love watching these two G1s. It is Tetsuya Naito versus no Zack Sabre Jr. with Kosei Fujita. Um, Sabre yes. wants the fist bump, like the LIJ fist bump to start, but Naito ends up sp- Goes for it, but then spits in his face. Uh, they get into a bunch of roll ups. It's just a great little spot there. A uh, little bit into the match, Zach gets the, uh, as I think they call it the English surfboard, where he's got the legs hooked with the knees into the back, and it's a straight jacket choke as he's pulling mm-hmm. him over his knees. It was, I was like, it's, it's an English surfboard, eh? Okay. <laughs> yes. uh, I like it though. Uh, uh, Saber gets an inverted triangle over the ropes and drag Knights out to the floor. Hits uppercut, but Naito reverses the whip, sending Zach into the barricade. Then puts him on the apron. Hits a sick looking hangman neck breaker. Uh, Naito is it gets him back in the ring. Hits elbows and Esperanza off the second rope. Zach avoids Destino, but Naito gets uh, uh, Naito uh, gets Naito down. And he gets a beautiful looking dragon sleeper on Naito. I was like, yeah, let's go. Uh, mm-hmm. Turns it into after six or seven seconds, goes to the inverted triangle, but then Naito gets a foot on the ropes. Um, Zach, uh, towards the end of this match, Zach stops the Destino into the Zach driver, but he cannot capitalize, which was just like, okay. Uh, they start trading strikes to center. Naito goes to those elbows to the neck, dropping Saber, and they. Uh, they each start reversing each other's finishers, trading pins. Um, Saber avoids the Enziguri, twists them up, gets the European clutch with the arms crossed and him balancing on his head for the win. Mm. And then Saber immediately leaves the ring, grabs the IWGP title off of the table. And goes into the crowd, and there's this perfect shot from in the crowd of Saber holding the belt, and it's over his back, and he's looking at Naito in the ring. I was like, "Oh God!" It's shooting Saber from behind. I'm like, "Oh my God!" It was a great shot. I I wanted to get it for this, but I, I just didn't have time to find it. Ah, so good, so good. Yeah, this was a really really fun match. I did feel like, um, 
I feel like Zach knew that he had Naito's number pretty early in this match and that it was just kind of him toying with Naito for a little bit. Um, just a really, really fun match. I love seeing Zack Sabre Jr.'s technicality now. Like, it's just so good. Um, I feel like some of Naito's moves, the the setup for it was taking a little bit longer than than usual, or Zack Sabre Jr.'s just got faster. Um, maybe a combo of the two? I'm not sure. But, like, some stuff, like when he was setting up Esperanza, sometimes it, it felt like, Oh, if Zach really wanted to, he could weasel his way out of there. It's taking just like that splittiest of a split second long. That is only window of opportunity Zach Saber Jr. needs to capitalize. But yeah, good pick, man. This was a great match. Oh, it's so stellar. Like I watched that Bolton and Hanari match and I was I, I loved it. But then this happened and I'm like, why does this have yeah. to be better? Because I love that other <laughs> match. That's why I gave it the honorable mention. I had to. Yeah. But we move on to the mail ball pick of the night. It, it, she has, this is trend seeming to go here. Yoda Suji is in two of her matches now. It was a great action. freaking match. I don't know. I think there might be a Suji element here. Uh, there might be a, a, a little bit of a salmon thing here going on here. <laughs> uh, early Dude, on, Suji salmon. gets a boss and crab, but Finley just like just clawing so quickly to get to the ropes. I love yeah. the desperation in it. A uh, little mm -hmm. bit into the later into the match, Suji catches Finley in the corner uh, with the feet, driving that face down into the mat. That stomp Mel likes. Um, mm -hmm. Finley stops the Marlow crash, shoving him to the apron, and Finley drop kicks him off into the barricade. They end up fighting on the floor. He ends up lawn darting Suji into the into the post in the ring. He hits a big dominator in the ring. Only gets two. He calls for 10 power bombs, but then just goes for a suplex, but can't get it. So Suji hits the suplex. I was just like, you just called for 10 power bombs. Why are you doing a suplex? Because he's a dastardly villain and he likes to lie. Yeah. A uh, little bit later in the match, Marlo crashes, Miss Finley goes for the spear, but. Uh, Suji hits the knee to the head, and uh, Suji gets a falcon arrow for two. Gene Blaster is stopped, and Finley gets into oblivion, into those trash pandas for two. Um, they fight back and forth, and uh, Finley hits a power bomb, then a buckle bomb, then another power bomb, but Finley ends up dropping to the mat too. So, like, doesn't not capitalize on the pin. Finley goes for overkill, but gets rolled up for two. But Finley comes back with a discus lariat. Overkill is avoided, but Finley unloading hard strikes to the head of Suji. Suji comes back with this sick headbutt. Um, and then Gene Blaster. And you think it's over, but nope. He hops to that top rope and hits that Marlow crash for the win. And what the hell, David Finley, is going on? I'm pretty sure he's going to be the other Cinderella in this tournament. <laughs> Probably either that or he's going to have, like, everybody in this block beating down his door for a title opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, which, you know, if he defends it successfully, I wouldn't be mad about. I think that'd be cool. Anyway. Um, plus, all benefits everyone involved. Anywho, mm -hmm. I'm going to focus on this. This was so fracking good. The story that was definitely told here was just so fun. Because Suji was a young lion still when Finley was already working in NJBW with Juice. So to see the transition from the, the young lion into the you know, big card main roster guy, come back with that unique style and to combat the unique style of David Finley. Like Finley, I think, struggled at some points keeping up with Suji. Just Suji is so deceptively fast for how big he is. Um, there was one point where they were on the outside and he was like slamming Suji into the announce tables, pissing off with Hiromu again. Um, feel like that's probably going to be a thing going at some point and I kind of want to see it because how funny would those promos be to see David Finley just lipping off about Hiromu and Hiromu yep. just screaming 
mm-hmm. at the camera. I kind of can't wait for that, actually. That'd be great. Um, yeah, I'm happy. And I feel like this is the, the re-railment of Yoda Suji going forward. Mm-hmm. I think that that, that first match for you, man, was a hiccup. And I think it almost like Kanosuke kind of needed that win to set himself mm-hmm. for this tournament to show like, no, I'm I'm a dominant presence here. Fear mm-hmm. me going forward. So like, I think he kind of needed that win for that that to create that feeling for him there. I agree. So quickly, a block. You have Zack Saber Jr. and Evil on top with four points. You have Jake Lee, Kyle Newman. Shingo Takagi, Sonata, Gabe Kid, and Shota Umino, all with two points. And then the Great Okan and the IWGP World Heavyweight Champion, Tetsuya Naito, both with zero points. Um, over in the Bay Block, uh, we have Hanare and Yuya Yuimura on top with four points. Then you have Jeff Cobb, Kanosuke Takeshita. Both men still had to have to face on night three uh, to to catch up to the rest of the people in the block. So they are at two points. Then you have Bolton Oleg, mm-hmm. Ren Narita, Yoda Suji, all one and one with two points. And then you have El Fantasmo, Hiroki Goto, and David Finley, all with zero points. So mm-hmm. it's going to be an interesting. I think the B block is going to be insanely interesting. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I felt like the B block was the one that was like, it's gonna be the funnest. But even the A funnest. block, the more the more I see from it, it's crazy, man. Yeah, what a tournament we're getting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I real uh, and one quick thing to date too. Uh, if Chris Charlton wasn't there, I really think Jeff Cobb could have done a great job on commentary. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I'm, I'm hoping we get uh, a night of Cobb. We get. An, I'm kind of want to hear Finley. On commentary, I'd like to hear him get back on there again. He wasn't totally I horrible last him time. A second chance. Yeah, uh, and then I think uh, out of the A block, I kind of want to hear Gabe Kid. Want to hear <laughs> shit all over people? Yeah, and uh, him. Um, what was it? Contribute to the retired wrestlers fund. Yeah. And Newman, who actually did a good job on the night he did commentary, he did, I want yeah. I want him on, I want him on a B block show. I want to hear him do That'd commentary cool. on a B block show. Yeah, yeah. So we have come to the end of another edition of NJPW Pooh Wrote us a review. Uh, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining us here. You can find me on the X at that can guy, TikTok, Instagram, and Threads at that Canada dude. You can find me on Facebook at Andre and Mobile Wrestling Talk. You can also go over and check our friends over at BAM Weekly. That will be changing soon, but go check out their Facebook page. It's going to be changing the logo and the name. Everybody that's part of the page will still be able to be there. So go over and subscribe to the BAM Weekly page. Uh, we're I'm, I'm in and out of the chats over there. We got some stuff coming soon from them, and we'll be we'll be part of that too. And then you can also find me over at twitch.tv slash our local establishment on Marvel Talk and the Japanese Wrestling Update. You can also find those shows over at youtube.com slash at our local establishment. Uh, you can also find us over at youtube.com slash at backbreaker video where Mike simulcasts all of our shows. Uh, you can also go to twitch.tv slash Mike Direct to see all the live content Mike puts out, all his AEW watch alongs, and all the gaming he does multiple times per week. And if you want gaming replays, go to youtube.com slash at backbreaker underscore gaming. We can find him, Mr. PJC, uh, this guy right here, Mr. Rick Jules, and that for a quick guest. Kayla J. Kayla J. Kayla J. Kayla J. We love Kayla J. Yes, we do. Melba, where can they find you? If you're wanting to follow Melba, you can follow her on the X thing at Collins Melba. You can follow her on everything else Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Mastodon, and Blue Sky at Melba Collins. You can also find me as Andre Mention on our local establishment programming. Pro blah, blah, blah. blah programming. Japanese wrestling update um, on Fridays 8 p.m. Mountain Time. Unless it's not. And this week it's not. 
because we are very busy. It's very hot out. We have a lot of stuff that we have to record for the G1, and we are attending the Love Pro Wrestling show on Friday. So we will not be available, but it will be back for you the following Friday. We just don't know if it's going to be live yet or not. It should be, but we don't know. Some some places are just disorganized. You can also catch me on Astro Bazaar's YouTube channel where we do our show, Ladies Wrestling Showcase, a show all about the ladies. I have not been diligent in nagging on her enough this week to set up a episode, but we will hopefully be ne- back next week with a brand new episode. But go to her website or her YouTube channel there to see our most recent episode about Mercedes Monet and Stephanie Vaquier. If you're wanting to watch NJPW, we will leave a link in the description box down below. Is NJPWWorld.com. It is how much yen? Well, it's 999 yen, but it's now like 1,200 and some yen for existing people. I don't know. It's it's all it's a giant mess now. Ten Canadian. More like fourteen fifty. Shout out John Spears, but more like fourteen fifty according to this guy. Yeah. Oh, hi, Eddie. <laughs> Still an amazing price to watch some amazing professional wrestling. And if you want a taste of what you can get with NJPW, go ahead and check out their uh, World TV title matches. They are all totally free. Andre. My trusted friend and colleague. Do you have anything else to say to the beautiful people? Again, just want to say thank you all so very, very much for all the great support here. Uh, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment down below. Don't forget to share us out to your, your friends, family, and just weird little devil cats. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you can be alerted every time we drop a new video. Bing dong. Hello. Hello. And that being said, I am your Malbo. Over there is Andre. We will see you next time. Adios.